Right, so can you guys hear me okay? Somebody can let me know in the comments, that would be spectacular. Brilliant, Gail's hearing me. I have no clue what happened there. Christy can hear crackling, that's bizarre. We're back with sound, woo! I was looking like I'd put my mobile on Do Not Disturb and I was just thinking, oh hell, cause is somebody ringing me or something? But then nobody was ringing me, so I'm not sure what's going on there. How bizarre. Anyway, as we were people, as we were. So that first little part of the video, um, you obviously haven't, I'm not gonna have missed a lot. I've literally just deleted it. I haven't posted it or anything cause I didn't wanna waste time flanneling around while you guys were trying to get back online again. So I have no clue what, what on earth was going on there? It wouldn't be one of my lives, you guys, without weird sort of gremlins. <laughs> so yeah, we were talking about Castle Arts pencils. So I found with this particular brand, they mix a lot better if you put a darker colour down first and then over blend it with the lighter colour. That's what I'm finding with these. So that's why when I'm using these, I'm always starting with that darkest shade and then going in with the light shade over the top as well. Yeah, I blame the neighbours, honey. It's like the terrible vibes that they're giving me with this shocking music they're listening to. Not my cup of tea at all. I think I'm getting old. It's probably what it is. It's just the singing as well. I'm like, you guys need to listen to yourselves because it's, it's not the X Factor. Definitely not. <laughs> really quite bad. There we go. So I think I'm going to carry these two colours up into this little little triangular bit. You'll find that the neighbours here probably. Probably got like some weird bugging device linked into this. So yeah, these Castle Arts pencils. Um, I've actually got a surprise package coming from Castle um, quite soon. So they messaged me over on Instagram because I've been pe sort of copying and um, putting up a lot of stuff I've been doing with their pencils lately. They said, we'd like to send you some products to show your followers. So it's coming. I just don't know when. Um, I'm hoping probably next week at some point. So as soon as it does come, I'm going to try and put a video up when I'm opening the box so you guys can see what I've got. But I'm thinking if they send me another pack of the 120 pencils, at least I've got spares. I'm kind of hoping they maybe send something different, but we'll see. It went Pete Tong. It did go Pete Tong. I don't know what happened. It's got to have been my end. It can't have been like all of you guys that couldn't. <laughs> it's got to have been something at this end that was going a little bit Pete Tong, definitely. So I'm going to use a couple of slightly paler colours. So Naples Yellow and Naples Yellow Light. This is number 8 and number 73, which is a bit... That numbering is weird, isn't it? You'd think it would be like number eight and then number seven but it's no it's number eight and number 73 very bizarre just going to get a slightly better tip on this one so sorry for the noise the, sh the sharpener is a miracle worker but it doesn't do anything quietly there we go so i'm using the naples yellow first so number eight hi shell you okay sorry just noticed there that you'd popped in I'm hoping I'll get gel pens, Hannah. Yeah, I was looking actually on their website and um, they have, I think it's a set of 100 that comes in a case. Anything that comes in its own case is an instant <gasps> for me. So, um, yeah, if they send gel pens, oh my God. What will I do? My pen tails will be like, you're using something different. Be interesting if I like them better than the pen tail, won't it? <laughs> Hi Esther. So we've got Hungary in the house as well. How fantastic. I'm not going to add too much of, of this colour because I want this to be quite pale. So this Naples yellow light is just a couple shades lighter here. So I'm just going to introduce that in. Well, that music's slightly better that they're playing now. You're almost as excited to see what I get as I am, yeah, I know. <laughs> it 
Yeah, it's funny actually. Their sort of social media people must be really active, really quite late in the evening because they sent me that message. Um, I'm trying to think what day it was. It was probably Tuesday or Wednesday this week, but they sent it at like quarter to ten in the evening. And um, I thought, wow, your social media people don't get a break. Like that's really, really late to be sort of online and stuff. But they seem to regularly be active at that time in the evening. But yeah, I'm dead excited. It's going to be great. Right, I'm going to do something a bit different with um, the roof of this one. So I'm just going to shift these other ones out of the way that I've yet to use. In fact, I've got one of those pop-up Faber-Castell water pop things. So I'm just going to unpop that and use that as my um, used pot. Because I'm, I get into a heck of a mess on this table otherwise. So I'm thinking... I might do a, I might do like a greeny roof. So just having a little look at my colour chart again, so just bear with me like you normally do. So I'm thinking chrome. Chrome green and Prussian green might be good. So I just need to find that. So chrome green is here and Prussian green. Just need to get a better tip on one of these ones. So I've had a couple of my castle art pencils breaking on me. Not many though. Um, yeah, I've had bad luck with maybe two of them out of the whole pack, so I don't think that's so bad. So I'm going to use this chrome green, so number 53, that's my dark shade. And then I'm going to see what it looks like with this Prussian green, which is number 55. So I'm going to start with the chrome greens first. So I'm just going to gently from the edge inwards add in some of the darker colour first. Let me just swizzle that round very slightly. But yeah, the, the tin um, that Johanna sent me, the little white pencil out of that set, kept breaking and breaking and breaking when I was sharpening it with the, the Dahl 133. And that's usually a really reliable sharpener, so I think it must have just been one of those ones that gets dropped um, and then you have a problem with sort of the rest of the lead. But I sorted it out by using that Faber-Castell um, sort of barrel sharpener thing, um, using it in the art grip part of that sharpener, and that just sorted the problem out. So I think it was just um, it was just sort of one duff one out of all the all the other ones that were okay. So yeah, not, not too bad. So dial 166. So what's the difference, Carmen, between the 133 and the 166? Is that the width of the pencils that it can accommodate or something? Because I've seen loads of variations of that sharpener on Amazon, and I'm not really convinced I understand what the difference is between all of them. So hopefully one of you lovelies will know the answer to that question. See how we're like doing this back to front, and I'm now asking you guys questions. <laughs> So yeah, so this is quite a pleasant green. I haven't used this one before. One thing it does have a lot of, I will say, in the, the castle is it's got a very nice selection of greens, sort of blues, purples and pinks. The one thing it doesn't have, which is such a shame, is a decent selection of brown tones and grey tones. Oh, it's got a metal casing on it. Oh, fair enough. Thanks for that, Carmen. They've just brought out a, a really violent green colour um, edition of that Dahl 133 sharpener that looks really funky. I'm not sure if it sharpens any better because it's bright green, but it certainly looks quite cool. So while I've got this darker pencil in my hand, I'm just going to put some of this darker green in here. So Annie, do you have to put more pressure on to get the depth of colour? So let me show you on a piece of paper real quick. So with this particular pencil, if I was pressed in hard, that's the depth of colour I'm getting. The pressure that I'm putting on at the moment is getting me this kind of colour out of it, only purely because I'm going to be smushing another colour over the top, so I would never push that hard if I was going to blend more than one colour together, if that makes sense. So I'm not pressing massively hard with these. Um, 
the leads on these aren't as soft as a Prismacolor pencil in any case, but you can still get a really good colour saturation with really light pressure because I'm barely tickling the page at the moment. So I'm going to add in, um, in these little creases in here, some more of this dark green. Wow, where are my glasses? Honest to goodness. Oh, there's the house. <laughs> Do this every week. When am I going to remember I should be wearing my glasses when I'm doing this? They're on my head as well. <sighs> and then you've got to laugh at yourself. So, so funny. So yeah, I don't know how many of you folks have finished this picture yet or um, if you're colouring along at the same time or just watching, um, just because you're watching. Um, but this page will definitely be finished off by this time next week. I'll be colouring the last couple houses with you and that will be the night sky that we'll be doing. Hello house. <laughs> That's literally like, <laughs> I could see these little tiles were thinking, God, they're so small, I can barely see them. Ah. Oh. That's because my glasses are being used as a headband instead of sitting on my nose where they should be. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Hi, Josephine. Thanks for popping in. The usual craziness, I'm afraid, is going on at this end. <laughs> right, let's see how this um, looks with this Prussian green. So this is number 55 that I'm using now. So let's see how these integrate together. So I am going to layer some of this up over that darker green so it just smooth, smooths, I can't speak now, smooths things over. So I'm kind of using this as a bit of a blend layer so I'm not pushing awful hard here because I don't want to lose the difference between these two greens. I'm just pushing hard enough so that it smooths over the areas where I've already coloured. I need a house or a cake when you're short of time. <laughs> That's one thing about this book I'm actually really loving, all the little motifs and things. Um, because you can just do little bits of, of things rather than a whole massive big page. So I know somebody had said um, in another group last night, um, oh, it would be really great if you did a full page colour along over like sort of three or four weeks, which I am thinking of doing. But my concentration span at the moment is not great. I'm not sure why. So... I'm kind of liking these little quick sort of wins because I can think about little things like this, right? Whereas trying to think about a plan for a whole page at the moment is a little much for my very small brain to cope with just now. And I have no clue why that is. It's probably why I've got so many work in progresses at the moment because I've got like half a project on the go all the time. So funny how you get like that sometimes. You guys will get that completely, I know. But yeah, I am liking these little quick wins. So these greens actually look kind of cool together. So I haven't tried these together. Literally just looked at the colour swatches that I'd made and had a look for two sort of similar toned greens that would go together, a couple shades different. So when you're looking at green palettes, you'll get some greens that are kind of like yellowish, You'll get some greens that are kind of greeny blue and some that are true greens. So these two are both sort of a true green colour. So you know when you're mixing a couple of greens like that together that you're probably reasonably safe. You're not going to have like a really randomly weird looking thing on your page. Um, these ones, because they're lighter and they would probably be a bit more bluey green, you could probably get away with mixing them with one of the yellowy green colours as well. So. As you get better with your eye and choosing colours, you kind of tend to then instinctively know which ones are going to look not too bad and which ones are going to be a disaster. So this was luckily a reasonably good spot. So I'm just doing exactly the same with this, popping over the top. Um, and then just leaving that little pop of white at the bottom of the tile. So have I done the birdie page yet? Which birdie page? Are we talking about the one with the birds sitting on top of the lone house or are we talking about a different birdie page because i'm in the middle of the sweet treat cart page and i'm also in the middle of the page that's an underwater scene with like a palace 
at the bottom of it and lots of fishes. So I'm doing um, my favourite bits at the moment, which is the water and the stonework. So I will be digging into some of that again later on, I think. So let's just get rid of... I think what I'm going to do is just use that darker green just to do these little under bits here. Oh, Rachel. <laughs> I'd never thought about it like that because, of course, in Brazil, they're the colours of your national flag, aren't they? So, I'm thinking gel pen toppers on that one. So, I'm going to do a dark green door frame. Definitely. And then I might do like a little cream door to these gizmos here. I'm thinking I'm going to keep these green as well. So this is just that darker green, that first, I um, can't even remember what it's called, chrome green colour. So I'm just going to tickle the bottom of that. And then we'll add a little bit of the lighter green just over the top. And again, I'm just going to leave the smallest little hint of white at the top. And it just gives a natural highlight. And there we go. And then we'll gel pen these bits, but I'm not going to do that until the very end because I will make a mess of my hand otherwise. So I'm going to do this little window frame in the dark green as well. And then we've got that little chimbley thing at the top. I might do that metallic, I'm not sure. So let me just find the blue that I've been using for the one it's that one so this is the blue i've been using for the windows this cerulean blue middle so this is number 99 and i'm just going to add the smallest little hint of the blue leaving plenty of white around the edge and the same with this one so I'm barely pressing, so you get quite a nice amount of pigment out of these pencils. So Hannah's going to do the peacock page next, the one with the berries, leaves and fruit. I'm going to have to look, um, Emmy, because I don't recall which page that is. And that probably means because it's not on my radar quite yet with what I've got planned in my head, sort of upcoming projects and things. So no, it won't be a page I've done yet. Let's just add the smallest little hint of blue in the bottom corner of these windows and then I'm going to use the white pencil oh god Betsy's on the castle tea page spread yeah that one is on my radar at the moment that's one that I think I will be starting once I've got one of the other couple done that I've started so I'm just going to use the titanium white oh I needed some curtains <laughs> Oh, the one from Flourish. So, yes, I did do that page, but I did it when it was with the Flourish um, free download. I haven't done it in this book yet. So that one is very firmly on my radar as well, actually. Yeah, I know which one you mean. And no, Dominique, I've never watched an episode of that in my life. Um, I was the same with Game of Thrones. I was one of these people that had heard it talked about for years and had never watched it. And I'm doing exactly the same with um, with this one. I think that's going to be metallic as well and then this little pillar box thing might decide what colour he's going to be once I've done the sky so let's have a look at the sky side of things so I'm just going to dig out the pencils that I need which I've got to hand here in this pencil case just let me make sure I've actually got all of them one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. Hoping I put that other blue back in there, yes I did. Right, a couple of different um, pencils to show you for this one. So I'm going to show you them all before I get going. So we've got Purple Lake Deep, which is number 38. We've got Purple Deep, which is 89. 
Mauve Deep, which is number 90. We've got Cobalt Purple, which is number 88. I feel like a bingo caller right now. <laughs> We've got Bengal Rose Light, which is number 83. And then we've got some Cadmium Orange Light, which is number 74. And the other thing that I am using for the sky is this Derwent battery operated eraser. So I'm just going to put these down on my desk in the right order so I'm not screwing up which way around I'm using these guys. Let me just get them in my hand right. So that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, and then those two. Right, get these laid down on the desk in the right order. And I'm going to just spin that round very, very slightly. So it's the Purple Lake Deep, first of all, so number 38. But yeah, there's been a lot of um, coverage of that programme um, on the news lately, people going bonkers about it. So I'm, and you do need to check it out. Right, put your glasses back on so that I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. So with this one, we're kind of going to lay the colours down, erase it a bit, lay a few more down erase a bit more so it will all become apparent as I go through so we're starting in a basic color graduation so I'm going in with the darkest purple first of all and I'm keeping the pressure nice and light at this stage it's going to start at the very very top and we're using um, so again when I'm shading with the pencil I'm not shading with the pointy bit down. I'm holding the pencil at the side and shading with it like this. So you find that you end up with one edge of your pencil that will go very, very flat and that's the best surface for doing this kind of shading. So. Keeping the pressure nice and light with this one. might just actually have to hold this slightly differently because I don't want to colour this little chimney in in purple. I'm going to go over it in gel pen anyway so it doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to keep going all the way out. It's got a nice light pressure at this stage because we're going to darken some of these colours up once we do the layers. So that's an initial layer down of the darkest purple. And I'm going on to this mauve deep, so number 90. And what I'm going to do is just integrate a little bit of that over the top of this first purple. And using exactly the same pencil stroke, I'm just going to take that down the page. And then do the same on the other side as well. And I'll just add a little bit of it over the top here as well. You can get it on Netflix, can you, Dominique? I'll have to have a look. I'm still up to my neck in um, RuPaul's Drag Race at the moment. It's kind of ruining me for any other show until we've finished where we're up to. We're on All Stars 5 at the moment, absolutely loving every second of it. So funny. So then on to the Cobalt Purple, so number 88. So same again, just going to integrate this. It's slightly over the top of the last colour. And then using exactly the same pressure on the pencil and the same blending just taking this next colour down the page. Oh, that's really good news, Heather. So yeah, those of you with the, the castle arts, if you weren't aware, if you're wanting to do colour swatching, they will, if you email them, send you over a copy of a blank swatch chart and they do that for the watercolour sets and their ordinary colouring pencil sets. And then you can just print it off and swatch away without having to write all the pencil numbers, names and the rest of the shebang down they uh, they provide that for you free of charge which is pretty cool i'd already actually downloaded and printed the one off emily illustrator's website before i contacted them but yeah 
So purple deep is the next one, so number 89, so exactly the same again. No, Hannah, I don't watch Line of Duty. Never seen it. Never seen it. But I know it's, um, it's obviously crazy popular with people at the moment, so it will be added, no doubt, to the list of many things that I need to spend time watching. We're in the middle of RuPaul's Drag Race at the moment and The Crown. So I'm just going to take that down a little bit further because I haven't quite got that even on both sides. There we go. So then the lightest sort of pinky purple is this Bengal Rose Light, which is number 83. And again, I'm just going to add some of this at the bottom. both sides so then with the Derwent so this is the Derwent battery operated eraser so you do before you do anything with it before you start to erase always check the tip because you could probably just about see there where I've been doing the other ones this morning we've got a nice pinky purple tinge to that eraser so if you then go and use it over something else you're going to get that pink on your page which you don't want so I'm not going to bother cleaning it because it's the same colours. So what we're doing with this is um, just gently using it over the top to randomly erase little areas. So it's going to create some natural light and dark areas amongst this flat colour lay down. So not pressing very hard, just enough to lift some of this pigment up off the page. And then what I'm going to do is just soften off the edges where the pencil line stops so it's not looking quite as harsh just erase that little bit on the flag that I put down so let me just get rid of those bits off the page have a little look and I can just see a couple of other places where I'm just gonna break up that pigment slightly there we go oh yeah Dominique my new toy was half the shop <laughs> so funny i only went in for the eraser and i've come up with polychromos as well it's my kind of shopping trip <laughs> so back to the purple lake deep so we're going from top to bottom again so number 38 so i'm just going to get this a little more on an angle so um with this top one i'm just going to show you what i'm doing rather than try and talk you through it so i'm using slightly harder pencil pressure now and where i've created these light areas I'm leaving them, I'm just going to emphasise the colour again in a colour graduation. So I'm going to add just some little areas of this one because this is the darkest one. I've got another purple that I want to work in. So I'm just going to use this in random places. So this kind of sky is the one that you see in the distance where the clouds are all sort of broken up and all we've got is these different sort of layers of colour. Good job I've got headphones. Oh, Dominica, did I nearly just dob you into your partner then for the shopping trip, Soz? <laughs> Oopsie. So funny. So, so funny. So I'm going to do this on both sides. So I've got a little more pressure on the pencil this time. I'm kind of going around some of these areas that I've left lighter. And we'll add more of the, the detailing with some of the other purples. I'm not going to go too mad with this one because this is the darkest one. <laughs> so I'm going for the mauve deep now, so number 90. And then I'm going to carry on working at the top here. So I'm just gently using that to go over the edges. So to just blur slightly the edge of those sort of harsher purple lines that I've put in. So slightly less pressure when you're doing that bit and then now I want to start creating more lines so I'm going to use a little harder pencil pressure and I'm going to do this in a couple of places sort of working down the page so we add a little bit of the darker colours down into this light area and vice versa so that's one side so I'm just again I'm going to go into the, that darker colour that was laid down to start with, just blur the edges a little bit, carry this line on, 
because you can sort of see natural peaks and troughs where you've got pigment, less pigment, pigment, less pigment. So the areas where you've rubbed the pigment away with the eraser, that's the areas where you'll add the other bits of colour in. So if you look at this one, which you can probably just about see, I've got some of the lighter pinks up here and some of the darker purples down here. So we're trying to integrate them, them together in different places. So again, I'm just going to start, carry on with this pencil and create a little few more sort of lines and bits down here. And what I always do is I'll go back in with the eraser again, just to lighten some of these areas slightly once I've gone over the top. So next one is this cobalt purple. So this is number 88. So again, I'm going to integrate a little bit of this more pinky purple tone up into this darker area so get it going between the, the sort of darker purples add a little bit of it up into this area that was completely erased so we've got a nice pop of that color and that kind of looks nice against the roof of the house and up here we'll add a little bit up here as well so less pencil pressure You guys are so sweet. So I haven't done any, any tutorials. Like this isn't this is nobody's technique that I've tweaked. This was literally me sort of piddling around with pencils and trying to come up with a sunset colour palette and then messing around with the eraser and things just to see what kind of effects that I could get. So I think sometimes it's just about looking at what you're wanting to try and achieve. Maybe get a reference photo so you can see what kind of colours are in a sunset like this. And looking in your pencil tin and just seeing, well, look, what have I got? How can I try this? And just using a plain old sketchbook or a piece of paper and just practicing and seeing how it looks. And then once you've got something that you're happy with, you can stick it down in, in your colouring book. And that's literally all I did. I've just messed around. I had a bit of a practice with a bunch of colours. But yeah, that's, that's reasonable. I'll show the guys that at the weekend. Um, and, and that was that. So at this point in time, I have no clue what what the hell I'm doing with this night sky thing but I'll just mess around with my sketchbook and come up with something and then we'll have a little look at it so it's just about trying stuff that's all it is but yeah guys I'm glad you mentioned in that code so Castle Arts has a discount code called social 30 on at the moment and you save 30 percent on their pencils so if you are thinking about getting some they'll be cheaper than Amazon on there and you get free delivery as well so Purple Deep, number 89, I still feel like a bingo crawler, it's a bit weird, so funny, love bingo, random weird fact about me, number two, <laughs> so I'm just going to do the same thing here, so as we come down the page, we will make a few of these sort of dark, slightly darker areas, I'm not going to go too much darker down here because we're going to have some green for the foliage, but I'm going to do as I've done before and take the slightly lighter colour up into the darker areas. We'll add some sort of darker pops of this colour in between the purple, which just gives it a slightly different look. Ah, oh, Jeanette's going to have a go. That's great. You're not going to go wrong. This is really basic stuff, you guys. I know some of you are probably looking at it and thinking that looks really hard, but I promise you faithfully it's not. And you're not going to go wrong, just practice first. Just have a little practice. So I'm going to leave that alone. So we've come down to about this level on the house. So let's try and keep this looking reasonably even. So I want a slightly darker area possibly in here as well. There we go. Now we're into the pink and that orangey colour. So this is my lightest pink, so this Bengal Rose Light. So this is number 83. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to gently use a, that scumbling technique. So that's where you do nice light circles. So you don't get the harsh stop start lines with the pencil and it just keeps things really really subtle so I'm barely pressing on the page I'm just integrating this at the bottom of that slightly darker area 
and then we've got a nice area for the green to go in and so then with this lighter colour I'm going to go ahead and some of these areas that are a bit lighter we're just going to go over so slightly heavier hand now add a bit of this over the top Val's waiting for Amazon to deliver hers today how exciting that's very exciting nothing quite like an Amazon delivery when it's colouring supplies so this lighter colour this cadmium orange light this is number 74 out of the pencil range so where we've got some of these light areas what I'm going to do with this is add some pops of this orangey colour in over the top and particularly down here towards the bottom and then we're going to get that eraser lighten up tweak slightly and that's that so just add some little pops of that colour in so then back on with the eraser again I'm just going to sort of interrupt some of these areas soften off these edges slightly soften that off because that's a wee bit dark up there and then I will tweak this again with the pencils one last time and that will be job done it's just a wee bit too dark there as well on there Then the same again with the pencils, I'm just going to go back on with exactly the same colours, tweak any little areas that need to be tweaked, I'm just going to darken in that bit over the roof. So I'm just getting whatever colours I know that I need to put back in, so there's no, no different colours here other than the ones that you've already seen which is why I'm not kind of flashing them at the camera as I'm picking them up. I'm just tweaking where I've erased, where I want to sharpen things up. So you might say, well, you put the colour down, you rubbed it out, you put it down again, and you rubbed it out again. What on earth is in your brain? When you use the eraser to lift some of the pigment up, it creates these natural lighter and darker areas. And for something like this, or like water, it's just a really good tool to be able to get that natural sort of dark light area without you having to spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing all the shading. So it's a bit of a hack. Um, tweaking it like this is far, far better than messing about for hours on end trying to get the shading to look right so as you can see this little bit of tweaking that I'm doing at the moment isn't taking me long at all and I've already got those light dark areas because of how I have used the eraser but yeah shall you you can um, I use it for clouds as well it's brilliant for clouds so let me just find my greens Yep, same thing for water carol, exactly the same thing. So add in, um, let me just zoom out a second. Let me show you. So same thing, same thing for water, exactly the same. So I will be finishing this off. There's more detail to do in this once I've done the fish I'll be adding sort of you know other effects over the top but my base layer for this water different set of pencils exactly the same technique exactly the same but this obviously took me several hours it didn't just take me a few minutes so I'm going to put that page back in stop the colour transfer and back to the little houses so the greens I'm using the same greens that came in the tin that, um, of the botanical collection um, because I want all of these little areas to be a consistent colour. So these are the greens that I'm using a mixture of. 
and the base layer is always this permanent green colour, which is this 110. So I'm just going to swizzle that round again very slightly. In fact, I'm going to have a sip of my juice because I've got a frog in my throat. Oh, this is better. <clears throat> but yeah, that water probably took me about four hours, perhaps four and a half hours to get it to that point. I was at it and at it and at it. It was taking me ages. Hi, Gina. So permanent green, 110. So we'll just use this lay down a base layer down here so again I'm not pressing very heavy at all same blending that you saw me do on the sky so I can't sort of take this down too far or we're going to have no sunset for the little house underneath so what I'm going to do here is just ease off on the pencil press just slightly and just put a little hint of the green sort of coming up to meet the sky we've got just a little area of white in between the two so I'll anchor that little post box in and carry this on to the sides in fact I don't need my glasses for this bit that's screwing my eyes over so they can come off for the minute that's better take this sort of just past the house and again just very very lightly add a little bit of green and then we've got that area of white between the two it's going to look a bit funky otherwise so we're just going to extend that down just a tiny tiny bit there we go so these plants using the same colour we're just going to do a slightly bigger pencil stroke so this is just a giant version of the grass that you saw me do the last time and then I'm just going to add a slightly shorter one in front and then on this side as well we've already got some like little hints of grass here so all I'm going to do is just do exactly the same thing on this side. Then we'll maybe have a little bit coming out of here as well and then just some little random bits. So then I've got, um, I'm just thinking which colour, should I use the oxide of chrome? Yeah, we'll use the oxide of chrome. So this is a slightly darker green, so number 63. And all I'm going to do with this is go into the same shape and just add a slightly darker middle to it. So it's not quite grass and it's not quite shrubs, it's something in between. Yeah, it does, um, Gina and Shell, little detail, adding little details like this really does bring a picture to life. Definitely. I'm just going to add some little darker areas into the base of these little plants and then just use little circles just to anchor them down slightly. In fact I might add just a couple of sort of darker shaded ones in between there. And then this this green's like a bluey grey green it's quite a bizarre colour but it adds a nice little pop of colour on top of these other ones so it's not quite black and it's not quite green it's the weirdest colour but it just breaks up things from looking solid and then I'm also going to use this oxide of chrome just to add a little bit of shadowing under here so where we've got the two areas of the house just over the top Again, I'm not pressing heavy, nice and light. I'm just darkening, create that little tiny bit of shadow. And then just carry that over into this bit as well. And 
and then we've got this um, really really bright leaf green light colour this is number 61 and I'm just going to use that over the top and just soften the edge of this green area with this colour so it kind of just pulls everything together and it just creates an actual highlight again I can't go too far we're going to have like grass for a sky for this one which would be cute but it's not really yeah that'd just be weird wouldn't it so I was having to tell myself don't get carried away with your grass area or you're going to have nowhere to put the sky it's going to look very strange videos of how colour lanterns no I don't um I don't think I do if I do it can't have been a very memorable video because I don't remember <laughs> Right, let's whip out the gel pens in a second. I'm just going to do this little chap here. So, let me find my black. Uh, there it is. So, I'm just going to colour this black. I'm thinking red for that. Mm, let me have a look at what sort of dark reds I've got. Magenta would be nice. There it is. And I just want a slightly lighter shade than that. What we got? Uh, cadmium red. Right, so this magenta colour, so number 86. Do you need my glasses for this? It's a bit small. Oh, there's the post box. So what I'm going to do is go in with this darker colour at the bottom. And then we'll do this little door as well. And then I've just picked a red that's a couple shades lighter. So this cadmium red number 24. Just going to introduce that slightly over the first one, and then what we'll do is we'll leave a little highlight on the top. I think I might put a bit of white over the top of this. So I'm going to grab the white pencil, clean the tip because the last time I used this white, it was over the top of the blue windows, and I don't want a purple post box. And I'm just going to smooth that over. And then it's time to whip out the gel pens, I think. Hmm. So I'm going to use the black one for the little chimney. And then what colour am I going to do with these bits? Okay, I might use that metallic green colour. Right, so do this little chimney first so this is just a regular black glitter gel pen from paper chase i think it was like a quid um but i love it you can't get a black um, glitter gel pen in many ranges at all so this was a find i always get a handful every time i go but it has like a silver glitter in it as well which is really really pretty so i'm going to do the chimney in that one i'll probably do the flag in that one as well yeah gel pens is the best bit but i completely agree <laughs> So just for a change, you'll never guess which pens I'm going to use, the Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallics. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so predictable, so I'm going to just spin that round very slightly. And then let's get this going. God, I love these so much. So let me show you under the light. Are you ready? Everyone say, ooh, aren't they sparkly? Never get old, ever. <laughs> right, let's carry on and do the rest of the wreaths. <laughs> I know, Gail, you've just received yours, haven't you? And I know you're liking them. <laughs> you guys are so 
always funny. It's not going to get old. We're going to do this every week. <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. So just think of all the poor souls on YouTube that will be watching this back going, wow, this colourist is absolutely insane. Because <laughs> they can't see the comments. So I'll carry this down on all of these little edge parts. I do love these pens so much. Just, you know, like in case you didn't know that. There we go. Look at that, people. I mean, honestly, so pretty. This little flag thing. I'm just going to do it in the black one, I think. And then, oh, Catherine's got the coffee machine on, you guys. I can hear it. So this little door thing here, I think I'm going to do it in let me just grab So I'm just going to do the door in these two. So we've got cinnamon and terracotta light. So this is number 11 and 12, weirdly. Funny that they're like a shade apart and the numberings right. That's really bizarre. Um, so if you send me a message, I will send you the details at the end of the live. Right. So all I'm going to do with this one is add a bit of the shadow, keep my hand as far away from that gel pen as I possibly can. Uh, Alexandra's still in her PJs. Brilliant. <laughs> we had a cheeky Starbucks this morning when Catherine went to collect my mum. So that was lovely. And um, now Catherine's got our coffee machine on in the kitchen. So, lovely. Like, do not put your hand in the pen. Not put your hand in the pen, Suzanne. So this is the terracotta light, so I'm just gonna go over. It's so funny, isn't it, that we're all in different time zones. It's like it's two minutes after five in the afternoon here in the UK, and some of you guys, it's first thing in the morning. And you poor devils, you're sitting there in your pajamas, coming to you, listening to me rabbiting on about gel pens. You have my sympathies. <laughs> Right, we want some white gel pen now. Let me just find. So I actually treated myself to a new one of these. So I'm going to try the old one. And if it doesn't cooperate, we'll go to the new one. So this is my preferred white gel pen um, for making um, whatever effects you're going to do. This is the broad tip. Um, they also do a slightly smaller tip as well, which is this one. But there's actually not. A massive amount of difference with the nib sizes but I got both because it was just rude not to oh thank you thank you very very much so that's Catherine just delivering my caffeine for me can I borrow your mat please thank you stick it over here so I don't knock it over I'm going to give this one a little go. Let's just see whether it works or not. Alexandra says, hi, Catherine. You can speak. Hello. <laughs> Catherine does colour Emmy. Yes, she does. Um, but not as prolifically as I do. And not as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, so I'm just going to add some little... Caffeine Catherine. <laughs> yeah, she is Caffeine Catherine on a Sunday. Definitely. Oh, this pen's doing my nut in. I'm going to give it one last chance on a piece of paper and it's going to file itself in the bin otherwise. Right, I just wanted to create a dot. This is not a complicated process. So Emmy's just said, do I not teach you? I think you're happy doing your own thing, aren't you? Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's happy. I have other hobbies. <laughs> yeah, she has other other hobbies that she does that I can't do. So she colours in a Doctor Who colouring book, which is quite a cool book actually. Um, but you do model aeroplanes, don't you? Rather well actually. Uh, Carol's just said at last we can hear her. <laughs> yeah, she is real. I'm not making her up. I promise. But yeah, she has her own sort of um, hobbies and things. Um, but yeah, no, we do not share pencils. She has her own set. <laughs> Although I have offered her to use my pencils and she's always like, I better not, I might ruin them. It must be the steely glare I give her if she goes near them, I'm not sure. door handles in this black pen there we go and I think what we'll have actually as well let's go really mad so this um, this is the pink this is the dual metallic pink so I'm just going to add in some little um, coloured sparkles as well so they're just like little dots but they could be sort of flowers and things um, no we don't share the gel pens Annie she literally has her own set of everything. She's got her own pencils, her own fine liners, her own pens. I do offer like, but she's just happy using the ones that she's using. Unlike me, who has to have every tin of pencils in the entire shop, which is quite funny. Right, bear with me, you guys. I've just sorted my nose out, and then I'm going to have a sip of my uh, coffee. Um, I did do the purple sky this morning, Gina, but don't worry, this video will be there for you to have a little look at. So don't worry, you haven't missed anything, missed anything. Right, let's see. I'm not sure what syrup she's given me, but I'm going to have a sip. I just can't not. Mm, that tastes like salty caramel. Mm. Lovely. Right, let's do this little house. But yeah, so funny. Right, I've got a couple of different blues that I haven't used yet. Um, so I've got cerulean blue, sky blue, and ultra ultra marine light. So I'm going to go with the sky blue first. So um, no, Emmy, she doesn't have Worlds of Wonder. Um, she literally only has one colouring book, and it's the Doctor Who one. And she won't let me buy her another one. It's just, yeah, that she doesn't have Worlds of Wonder. Maybe I'll surprise her and order it for her. Right, so I decided I needed a blue house. So I'm going to add a little bit of this one down first. How are we doing for time? Holy mackerel. It took me an hour just to do that little house in the sky with you guys. I'm doing too much blethering. Oh, the numbers. Yeah, sorry, um, Alexandra. This is number 46. Slipping a bit there. So, Sky Blue 46. But yeah, she doesn't. Um, but I am really interested, actually, in getting the French copy. Um, I really like the look of the cover. I know it's the same book, but it just looks pretty. So you never know, maybe I'll hop on to Amazon France and order one of those ones. So this is just going to be a two to three colour. I'm not sure sort of how these ones are going to blend together as yet. So I'm going to go nice and steady. And just add, so like I've explained to you guys before, the, the castle arts seem to blend a little better when you put the darker shades down first. Um, with Prisma, I do sort of blend slightly differently to this. It does it does scream my head over actually when I'm going from pencil set to pencil set. Like, how do I use this again? But it is it is it's all a learning curve. I'm just going to go nice and steady with this one, and then we'll add some of that lighter lighter blue on. So. The lighter blue that I'm using, so this is the cerulean blue, so this is number 100. So I'm 
just going to integrate it over the first blue that I've put down. Really do need to put my glasses back on on my head again. There's the house. So you're just kind of using it as a blend layer as you go, really. Let's see how we get on. I think this is one of the little houses that Johanna um, coloured in live when she was doing this page on one of her live streams. I'm sure it was this one and the one above it that she did. That's quite pleasant actually. Might pop a bit of white over that. So my favourite colour is blue. I love blue. Anything blue. Definitely. I have certain um, shades in certain pencil sets that are my favourite colours. I haven't been using these ones long enough to have a favourite shade in the Castle Arts range yet because we're we're still getting to know each other. But if we were talking Prismacolor, um, I love Process Red, which obviously isn't blue. Um, I love the Light Aqua and I love the True Blue one of my absolute favourite colours and the Peacock and Copenhagen blues but yeah the, me and the Castle Arts range were still in negotiations with each other at the moment I haven't used all these colours yet apart from to swatch them but I'm kind of liking this one this is really in blue nice need another sip of coffee sorry if I'm gulping in your ears you guys Oh, that's so good. Mm -mm -mm. Chartreuse. Beth likes chartreuse. Yeah, I quite like the chartreuse. I'm a bit partial to a bit of pale sage as well. Um, I'm trying to think, actually. There's certain ones in my range that are dead, dead short. I like the dark green. I like the Prussian green. I use that all the time. Um, oh, thanks, Gail. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think what other ones I use because I've been using these for a couple of weeks now and um, my prisma colours are getting neglected but I am going to treat myself and do some of that fish page later right I'm going to treat this to a bit of white over the top to burnish I might just put a bit of this ultramarine light on to darken over slightly so this is number 44 still feeling like a bingo caller Let's just see what this does in terms of shadowing stuff up slightly. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. So all I'm going to do is just add a little sort of ghost of this down the very, very edges. And then I'm going to treat the whole thing to some white, just to blend. So give a little bit of a, a shadow around this door frame. And we'll go underneath this roof as well. I'm not going to press very hard. I don't want to have sort of big big ugly blend blend markings and what have you but yeah these pencils are great if any of you are sort of wobbling about trying them um give them a try you know i didn't know whether i was going to like these until i started using them and i think if i compare these to the arteza expert pencils they are definitely not my cup of tea i find that they're too smushy and i know that's probably not really a word but um they just they just smush about into each other. I don't find I can layer them up, whereas these will take probably three to four layers of colour before they start to go, uh, no, stop now. So blendability I find these a little better. Hi, Amel. Olive green and all those dark purples. Yeah, the olive green is nice. Um, the other green that's really short in my range is the moss green in the Prisma love that one as well i think it's mainly the greens actually that are the shortest pencils and some of the pinks but for some reason even though blue is my favorite color i don't actually use all of them i'm just going to give this a just a blend over with the white just smooth this out a wee bit just a bit of wax bloom going on on the page happens with some um, wax based pencils nothing you can do about it I think it just makes the page look a bit more interesting right I think let's blend the two darker ones together so still with this ultramarine light I'm going to do this one in the 
dark I believe. Oh that's a lovely colour. That's really nice. This reminds me actually of the um, Copenhagen Blue in the Prisoner range. Probably why I like it so much. That's lovely. I think we might have a oh, although I had a grey roof on this one underneath. I'm not sure about the roof yet. thing as well I think with the Prisma purples is when you use the white gel pen over the top it always turns it pink. It's the weirdest thing. So I'm just easing off on the pressure because I'm going to be blending the other blue into that so I don't want that to be really harsh stop start lines and things. So yeah I'm going to spend some of tomorrow I think doing a bit more colouring. Um, I'll get a palette ready for Sunday for the nighttime sky. So although I'm doing sort of more mindful colouring in terms of I'm just throwing down whatever colours I feel like using on this page when it comes to the skies, I have been trying that out first. So this is the Sky Blue 46. Um, I can't kind of, I wouldn't ever go into something like the sky without doing a bit of a trial run, but these houses I'm literally just um, sort of throwing down whatever I feel like. So the one I'm using now, Jamie, is the Sky Blue. So this is number 46. 46 Sky Blue. I still feel like a bingo caller. 4 and 6. 46. Very funny. So what and where on Thursdays. So um, those of you that um, are in a different group which I'm not going to talk about in here because it's not right to do so but those of you that are in a different group and those of you that are will know what I'm talking about will know that on Thursday I did a trial live somewhere else whilst it was enjoyable it was quite clunky and I don't know if I've got settings wrong or whatever's going on I just I don't know but it really wasn't working so what I've decided to do is stay exactly the same as I have been doing. So on a Sunday, um, as long as obviously admin are happy for me to continue, I'll be in here with you guys on a Sunday afternoon, obviously UK time because it's morning for some of you folk at the moment. And on a Thursday, I'll be in my own Instagram um, account, profile, whatever you call it, and I'll be doing my live Instagram stream because it just wasn't working. And I just thought I ought to give it a try in the other place because things were getting a bit sort of bigger and it felt right to kind of do something there because things have got bigger but it was just really clunky and really awkward and it ruffled a few feathers i've had quite a few messages from people saying oh my god seriously please please do your things on instagram on a thursday like literally loads of messages it's not just one or two people quite a few for that or various different reasons but luckily I'm in full agreement, so that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. In terms of what, not sure, um, because I'm going to cover the other part of this page with you guys in here on Sunday. So I don't think I'm going to do any more work on these little houses over in Instagram, so I'm going to have to put my thinking cap on for Thursday. So watch this space, because I don't know. That was a very long-winded way of telling you guys <laughs> I'm going to be doing it um, in Instagram on a Thursday. So, what am I going to do with the roof? Hmm. Let me look at my chart because I just don't know. So, I've already got two grey roofs a green roof and a brown roof. Yes, um, the Thursday ones uh, stay permanently on my Instagram TV, and where I don't have any IT issues, they'll always be uploaded to YouTube straight after. So, you'll always be able to catch it somewhere. What am I doing with this roof? I might do it yellow, you know. Do it yellow. Let's do yellow ochre light. Have I already used you? So just having a little look in my pot because I don't know if I've already got that one out. Are you in here? Nope. Nope. Let me find it. I know I've seen it somewhere. So I'm yellow ochre light. I'm just going to find one that's like a shade. Let's go for Naples yellow and I'm sure I've just had my hand on that one. Ah, yes I have. P. 
pink. I could do it pink. The only thing is, I think it would possibly get lost with the sky background that I'm doing. So let's go with yellow. So I've got yellow ochre light, which is number 10, and Naples yellow, which is number 8. No face on this little owl, Claire. So let me show you guys this. <laughs> so Claire, um, those of you that um, are old enough to remember, of which I am included in that, is an old cartoon character many years ago was called Droopy the Dog. Um, and if you Google him afterwards, he had a very sort of long face and a very long area around his nose where his smile was. And Claire, <laughs> Claire said every time she sees this house, she sees Droopy Dog's face. Now I've seen it, I can't unsee it. So have a little look, Google it, and you'll see what we mean. But yeah, every time I look at that house, I'm like, that's Droopy. So yeah, thanks for that, Claire. <laughs> so I'm going on with the yellow ochre light first. But yeah, how funny. I was like, what What are you talking about? I literally have no clue what you're talking about. And then, because I, I couldn't quite remember what you looked like. And then I looked at him up and I fell about laughing. I was like, oh yeah. Droopy, Alexander. He's called Droopy. Droopy dog. So I can't even get it up on my phone and show you because that's what I'm filming with. <laughs> but once you've seen it, you won't be able to unsee it. That's exactly where I'm at. So funny. So, so funny. <laughs> yeah, you do. You definitely do. It's funny, actually, talking about um, things that are making me laugh. Um, I, I cracked up um, I with Johanna yesterday. So you might have seen on her story that she put a photograph of her um, pot plant up that was looking sort of quite sorry for itself um, and asked you know any advice and things so we have literally one house plant um, in this house which was a gift from a client of mine through work who I'd helped and she bought me which was really sweet um, like a massive gift bag of various different things and, and one of the things in this pack was a house plant so I was in instantly skeptical because I have, I have a knack for killing house plants well, this thing is still alive and, and thriving. It's got a lot bigger because I've had it probably nearly three years now. And we'd moved it from the kitchen where it normally lives up into one of the spare bedrooms upstairs over winter because our kitchen floor gets quite cold. The room gets chilly if we're not cooking in there. And I thought, well, this plant would be far better upstairs. Well, this plant sort of went a bit sort of droopy looking like Johanna's did. So I popped her a message yesterday over on Instagram and said to her have you um, moved it from where you were keeping it before because we had one um, and we had to bring it back sort of downstairs again and what we did is we um, uh, what I thought I would typed was we repotted it fed it and put it back to where we were keeping it and it's flourishing now so literally two seconds later, I see her typing back to me and she puts reported and a load of laughing faces. So my predictive text to change the word repotted to reported. So the message I sent to her read, we reported it, fed it and moved it. So she sent me this message back saying, um, I'm going to repot it, feed it and put it back to where it was and then report it to the pot plant police if it doesn't pick itself up <laughs> so oh my god so that was quite funny yesterday it made me chuckle anyway so i'm just going to go back on with so what am i missing here how long do they stay to rewatch? they stay permanently on instagram tv they don't expire i never put an expiry date on them so if you if you are on instagram and you go over and have a look um, you'll see videos going back nearly a year of all different sorts of stuff um, that I've been doing over there. Some of which I get onto YouTube and some of which I don't. So you will find different things on there that you're not viewing on my YouTube channel if you signed up. Just going over these little lines a bit more. That's quite a cute shade. It's probably not quite as yellow as I would have wanted it to be, but that's okay. I think we'll have a glittery door on that one. 
and I think we need a blue chimney. So I'm just going to go back to the same blues that I was using before. And what we'll do is I'm going to shade it from this side and pop a highlight along the edge. Bev would like to know what days you do your lives. Right, so um, as long as admin don't get sick to death of me, which I hope they don't, I'll be on here on a Sunday. Instagram live is always a Thursday at 7pm UK time. If it's not going to be, I announce it on my stories, but that's very, very few and far between that it wouldn't be on a Thursday. It's just if something comes up, which it does very occasionally. But if you're new to Instagram, I can't even show you because um, I've got the comments up on my iPad. On Instagram, along the top, you'll have um, little circle sort of things and you'll see people's name and that's their story. So you can click on there and people will announce things or show you things or whatever. I always put a, a time account down to my lives in my stories beforehand. And if anything's changing, all the things that I need you guys to know, that is where I tell you. That's a good place to start if you're learning to use, to use it, basically. Right, so this, um, so Cerulean Blue Middle, number 99. Same colour for all the windows. So I'm just going to add a little pop of the blue in the bottom corners. No finesse whatsoever, we're just popping the colour on. Oh, um, you couldn't find me on Instagram last Thursday, Carol. That was because I decided to do it um, somewhere else in Facebook. And it, it was fun, but it, it wasn't, it was clunky as hell. So I'm going back to Instagram. That's the only reason why normal things will resume from this coming week. See, I don't panic. Much as I enjoyed the company of everybody that was with me, it was nothing to do with that. It was just um, where I was doing it. It was just really, really clunky. It wasn't working for whatever reason. So, so yeah, just work it back. I don't know. I know you guys in the US are a few hours behind us, so it's always 7 p.m. in the evening UK time. So I'm not sure sort of what that would be for, for you lovely folk. So I'm thinking I'm going to glitter gel pen the hell out of this. I'm thinking I might leave that door white, you know. You tried Facebook as well, that's bizarre. Do you know, there's, there's something wrong with the feed, it just wasn't working properly from from the get-go, so I'm, I'm not sure what the hell was going on, it was probably me. Right, you guys, do you want to see the sky again? Because if you want to see the sky again, that's what I will do. But yeah, any sort of individual queries about what happened last Thursday or, you know, what's happening and where things are going, just pop me a little message um, and then we c I can answer your queries sort of out of out of here because I don't want to break sort of group rules in terms of touching into other things that I shouldn't be talking about. So, um, yeah, pop me a message and I'll, I'll deal with your queries sort of afterwards if that's okay, you guys. So let me just get these pencils in the right order. Okay, here we go again. So, first colour. So, purple leak, purple leak, purple leak, purple lake, deep. <laughs> Number 38. Before I carry on, I'm going to have a mouthful of coffee. Let's caffeinate. We can't speak. Let's have a very decent slug of coffee. <coughs> purple leak. Oh, dear me. Yeah, my hay fever's driving me round the twist today. Sorry for sniffling in your ear. Okay, so Purple Lake Deep, number 38. So what I'm going to do is just super, super carefully sort of underline this green area. So again, remember, we're using the pencil on the edge. So we're not colouring down here like this. Hold the pencil a lot further back and you're shading like this with it on the side. Take care Iris, thanks for joining. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. So what we're going to do is lay down a 
base layer of all of these colours, so we're doing a basic colour graduation. So I'm going to take this down to about there. So on the side shading, no pressure at all with this nice gentle hand. So that is about even. Uh, take care and Dominique, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And then Mauve Deep, so this is number 90. No problem, take care Emmy, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. So we're over layering slightly over the first purple. Same shading technique, just integrating those together, so pop a little bit of it up here as well, and then do the same on the other side, so we're down to about this sort of level on here. Doing a nut roast, yum yum, sounds wonderful. So cobalt purple, god I can't speak, what is wrong with me, number 88. Dear, oh dear, I think I need to go and lie down. It's thinking about all the um, nightmares I had with the live on Thursday night. It's uh, sending me funky. So let's do the same, sort of going down here. And then I'll integrate it. So every time you add a colour, you go over the darker one just above it and then take it down the page. And then purple deep, this is number 89. Just checking, I haven't, no, I haven't already used that one. So do the same again. So it's gonna be slightly less of the colours the further down the page you get because that's why we're going to have the sort of green foliage areas. And then we go into the lightest colour which is this Bengal Rose Light, so number 83. And we're going nice and gently with this one. So we're not adding any of the orange in until the last Stage. So then, with um, battery operated eraser, so this is the one by Derwent. And I'm just going to very lightly lift up some of that graphite in different places on the way down. If you've got any harsh sort of stop start lines with your pencil, you can use this to correct them. So just lifting up little bits of the colour that you've just put down. And I'm just going to soften those edges because I've got a couple of harsh stop start areas that I don't want. And then just try and be a bit careful with this. I don't know if some of that gel pen's still wet. That would be an interesting look. <laughs> So you can see there where you've lifted up some of the, the colour. So then you go back to your pencils in order again. So Purple Lake Deep, number 38. So where you've got these natural light and dark areas, that's where we're going to start the shading in. So slightly higher, harder, I can't speak tonight, what is wrong with me? Slightly harder pressure on the pencil. Yes, Mel, this is the 120 set that I'm using. So where you've got light, dark, light, dark, leave the light areas alone and start to just add in some darker pigment. I'm going to pick this bit up over the top of the roof, pick this bit up near the chimney. And then again, I'll carry that line on at the, towards the top. This is the darkest purple, so I'm not going to go down too far with this one. I just want to add some bits of it. So just re-darken, so you can see where I've used the eraser in here. 
I'm ignoring these areas at the moment and re darkening where the pigment is sort of uninterrupted because I haven't erased any of it. I'm just going to carry this line slightly down. That's my darkest purple. So then I'm going to the next one down, which is this mauve deep, so number 90. And I'm going to add this into where this darker purple is, so you can use that to just blur the edges. And then let's get a little bit of this going under here as well, just there's little areas where I've erased and I'm just working around those. You notice I'm holding the pencil towards the tip now because we're putting a little bit more pressure down. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this darker purple, just, just a whisker of it, down into where the colour's getting lighter. So we carry on now over at this side. So integrate the, this with the darker purple that we've already put down. Let's extend that line. So I've erased here, here and here, which is why I've left those areas light. I'm just going to extend that down. And again, we'll just add a little whisker of that darker colour a bit further down the page. Um, this is a different technique for me, Shell. I haven't done wood like this, but I, I would imagine it would possibly work. Yeah, for sure. So cobalt purple, this is number 88. This is where we're changing from pure purple to purpley pink tones. So again, I'm going to integrate a little bit of this up here. So into some of these areas where the pigment's been lifted. Start to add a little hint of this pink in places. And then further down the page, of course, we'll add more of this in as we go down. So just attach those two together properly. But, and then down here, start to add some of this in further down the page as well. And over to this side. A nice little pop of pink. So I'm sort of going over some of the darker purple, adding it into some of these lighter areas as well. And then I think what we'll do is we'll pop a little bit of it in over this roof as well. So then the purples are getting more pinky the further down the range we're going. So this purple deep number 89 now. Again, we'll add a little whisker of this lighter colour into a couple of places up here. Just feel I need to join that bit together a little bit. It's just looking a bit clunky. Get the eraser on that. And as we go down the page, obviously getting lighter and lighter. It's a nice contrast as well against the blue. But it's a nice contrast against any colour really. So then we're going into the lightest and so this is the pink, that Bengal Rose light. So number eighty three. So first of all I'm just going to scumble so that's the little circle blending technique. Some of this pink just down so that we're ready for the green. And I'm going to use this to just soften some of the edges of these darker purple areas so it's not quite as harsh with the stop start lines. And then we'll do the same on this side scumble a little bit of the colour on, nice light hand. Just soften these edges slightly. And then we're going to add this cadmium orange light. So this is number 74. So it is orange, but it's kind of peachy orange. So it has some of a pinky ready tone to it. 
in these areas where we've got light where we've erased and go ahead and add little bits of this colour through down the bottom here as well and then again with the eraser just going to lift again little bits of the pigment off the page I'm going to break that bit up there slightly I'm just going to soften this down here because that's a bit too dark there we go let me just brush all these bits away pen which I don't know if it's still wet and then with these colours where you just want in to emphasise the lines again now that you've broken that pigment up you can just go back with any of your colours so um, as I explained before it's a case of put some layers down lift a little of the pigment up interrupt those colour layers and then you can darken anywhere that you want to darken with the colours that you've already used. I'm just going to go ahead and lighten some of that up with that orange and then I'm going to integrate a little more of this much brighter pink through. Hi Julie. Don't worry, it will be available on replay. We haven't got too much longer now before I'm going to be loving you guys and leaving you guys anyway, but don't panic. It will be on replay and I'll have it uploaded to YouTube as well if that's easier in the next couple hours or so. So that is the sky. So not not terribly difficult at all. Um, really, really quite simple. So um, those of you that are sort of just joining and things, um, you can use that for different things. So this water, this is with Prismacolor and this probably took me four, four and a half hours to get it to this point and I'm not finished with this yet. But that is how I've got this effect with the water using that eraser. So it's something that I've just been messing around with um, and it's, yeah, it's worked reasonably well. Right, I'm just going to find on that really pale colour. Impressive pressure control. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> so this Naples Yellow Light, so number 73. I was toying with the idea of keeping this door kind of white, but I just want to sort of break that up slightly. So I'm just going to gently add a little bit of this colour over the top just to warm the door up a little bit. Don't think I want to keep it plain white. let's have a look at the grass area I'm just going to dig my greens out again honestly it's pencil carnage on this desk no nope, that's purple there it is please keep messing with things I love the outcome <laughs> thanks Tina <laughs> but that is how um, you guys can do things as well it's just messing around on bits of paper to find something you like so this is permanent green 110 so like I said to you, I'm going to be doing night sky on this side of the page next week. I don't know how I'm doing night sky or teaching you guys a night sky. That's me with a date with my sketchbook trying things out. So it's it's just playing around with things. And um, I just play around in the sketchbook before I commit it to paper in a colouring book. So you guys can do exactly the same thing. That's how you find things. You know, like Barbara had her happy accident with blending fine liners because she had made a mistake she wouldn't have known that if she hadn't have tried something and it had gone slightly wrong so it's you know have fun with your supplies try new things but yeah we're going to do a night sky next week i don't know how i just know that i'm just going to show you a night sky next week so uh, one evening this week i will be messing around with my sketchbook again to find a palette that i like 
and then this time next week we'll be finishing off the page. So I'm leaving a little area of white here between the sort of orangey pink and the green here because it's going to look funky if I, I smudge them together and, and that's not going to be a good look. So I'm just leaving a little bit of air space there. And then with the same colour, I'm just going to go ahead and add more of these sort of long grassy type things. Um, This is the same pencil stroke as you would use for grass. It's just you doing a longer stroke. So I'm not going to go sort of OTT with those. We're just going to add a couple either side. So this oxide of chrome. So this is number 63. I'm just going to use this to go over the top just to add a little bit of shadow in underneath the building. But yeah, it is. It's pencil carnage. And the one drawback with these Castle Art pencils is the barrels are all black. So it's really hard to see which colour that you want if you've got them sort of point up in a pen pot, which is how I've got them. Just add a little bit of shadowing under here. And then inside these shapes, just going to darken these a little bit towards the middle and then with this leaf green lights this is number 61 I'm just going to use that as the blend layer just to soften the edge of this permanent green that's been put down try and not get that into the purple or that's going to look really funky Viridian number 52. This is sort of like a bluey greeny, it's a strange shade, but it's quite a bit darker, so you can just add a couple other little bits with this one. Right, blue gel pen. Uh, So back to the gel pens, so still on the hybrid dual metallic, so this one is the blue and metallic green. And I'm going to do the roof apex with this colour. So I'm going to finish this little house off with you guys and then I'm going to love you and leave you until next week. In fact, I think we'll have a blue chimney top as well. in glitter as well and door frame and the little letter box And then with the Uniball Signo, so this is the new one. Really hoping this one works. Oh, it does. Wonderful. So with this new one, just going to add, oh, that one's very keen. That other one's going in the bin. Just some little dots. And then I think we'll have some... So this is the the mellow range of those pens this is the light pink but it's got some metallic green and gold in it as well got a 
slightly mucky tip. Clean that off. There we go. Just add a couple of little. As if we've got some flowers there in the background. Fred says Jamie. <laughs> other pen's definitely going in the bin in disgust. Terrible really, there's loads of ink left in it but never mind. There we go. Let me unzoom us. So that is ours. So again we've got super sparkly roof finishing with those pens and then you've just got the little bit of sparkle with the dots around the grass areas. So that's us for tonight. Like I say, next Sunday um, we'll do this part of the page. So I've already started colouring some of the little houses in. So what I, I may I may do one of these little houses on Instagram on Thursday, possibly. We'll see how we're going. But Sunday I'll aim to have a little block of two again. And then we'll do a uh, night sky on this side. So, so God knows how I'm going to do that. But I'll figure that out between now and then. So yeah. I hope you've all enjoyed that. Those of you that are in the UK, enjoy your bank holiday Monday tomorrow. I know I certainly will be. And uh, take care and I'll see you all again next week. Oh my God, Jamie's pen tells are still in Chicago. Dear Lord, what are they doing? How making them? That's ridiculous. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, they have had them a long while. That's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, you probably could have driven yourself and got them quicker. What a nightmare. But yeah, anyway, like I say, take care. I'm going to love you and leave you now. So I will get this uploaded onto my YouTube channel a bit later on this evening. Um, those of you that are sort of looking for product links and things for stuff like this, I will put links in there. It will take you to the product and then you can find it and buy it from wherever you usually buy it from. And take care and all being well. I'll see you this time next Sunday. So let me just oh, detach you from my phone stand. So yeah, that's the little one that I've done. I'll just give you a little look at that one. So yeah, that one's quite cute. Haven't done the other ones yet. Anyway, take care. I will see you all very, very soon. Patty bye.